Okay, let's go to figure out this problem. And the question is, is we want to find the area of a sector. Now, in geometry, when you're looking at a circle right here and you have kind of a little pizza slice right there, we refer to this little segment or this portion of a circle when we're emanating out from the center as a sector. Now, uh, more precisely, if we want to kind of define this sector, let's go ahead and give this a radius. So from the uh, center of the circle, this particular uh, sector has a radius of five. Okay, so this is five this way and five this way. And the arc right here is 75 degrees. So this is enough information for you to calculate the area of this particular sector. This is not that difficult. So even if you don't know um, how to do this, just think about this. Think about what you know about circles, okay, and area of circles. I don't want to give you too many hints because I want to give you an opportunity to figure this thing out all on your own. But uh, if you could do this problem, I'm going to put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step how to find the area of a sector. This is really important uh, for those of you that are like high school level math. Um, you know, you, you could be uh, not necessarily in a geometry class and have a problem like this. This is a geometry problem, I uh, guess what I'm saying. But uh, you can have geometry problems within algebra. So again, if you're at this level, this is something you definitely want to know. Okay, but uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love helping people learn mathematics. I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math. Now, I'm especially speaking to those of you who have a tough time in math. Maybe you failed math. Maybe you hate math. Maybe you're struggling in math right now. Listen, uh, there is hope for you. Okay, so don't give up. What you need is basically three things. One, you got to be willing to work hard. Okay, so if you're trying to learn math but not put in the effort, yeah, that's not going to work. All right, so you got to be willing to work hard. The second thing you need is encouragement, okay? Especially if you're struggling in math, you need someone to tell you that you can do this stuff. That's not gonna be a wasted effort if you work hard, okay? So I'm telling you that you can turn this around. And the third thing you need, the most important thing you need is great math instruction. Math instruction, you actually understand. If you're learning from uh, someone or something and it's very technical, for example, if you pick up a math uh, textbook and you don't understand what's going on, well, you know, you could be working hard, but if you don't understand the teacher or if you don't understand the material, you're not going to learn math. When I teach math, I try to explain things in an easy way where everyone can understand uh, the concepts without watering down uh, what you need to know. Because that's my teaching style. I've developed this over uh, several years. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something like the SAT, ACT, GED, maybe a teacher certification exam, anything with a math section on it, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes as well. Uh, most students at best take average notes. You know who takes great notes? Those students who get like grades like A pluses and stuff like that. Uh, there's a direct correlation to the quality of your notes to the grades you get. So if you want better grades in math, start learning how to take better notes. But in the meantime, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this answer here. We want to find the area of this little pizza slice, which we refer to as a sector of a circle. And of course, uh, this arc is 75 degrees. The radius is five centimeters. So what is the answer? Well, here it is, okay? So this is what we would call an exact answer. Okay, so we have 125 pi over 24 centimeters squared. That is the area of that uh, uh, particular sector that we just looked at. Now, um, again, there's a big difference um, when you're dealing with pi. Anytime you're doing any calculations with pi, if you leave the pi in your final answer, we would uh, uh, it, you're re basically giving an exact, precise answer. Okay, so you got to be careful of this. If I said uh, find the exact area of the circle, then you need to leave pi in. Now, if you wanted to find an approximation or an estimation of the area of the circle, then you need to go ahead and replace this pi 
with a decimal approximation. Of course, most of you might use 3.14. The more digits of pi you use, okay, the more uh, precise your answer is. Now, if you uh, went ahead and actually did an approximation, you can just quickly check to see if you did this right. One other thing as well in terms of your answer, we are talking about area. So if you look back here in the problem, okay, we're talking about centimeters. So that's the radius. So when we're cal uh, calculating areas, you got to be keep in mind that unit of measure. So this is going to be centimeters squared. Remember, uh, let's just do this real quick. Okay, if we're talking about distance, that's centimeters, right? Just one. If we're talking about like uh, this uh, length, for example, it's just one unit of measure, like centimeters, right? If we're talking about area, centimeters and centimeters, this is centimeters squared. And if we're talking about volume, okay, we're talking about centimeters cubed. So these units of measure matter, i.e., if you just gave me this number and you didn't put in the units of measure, well, I might be, you know, uh, not so nice to you. I might just give you like 9 out of 10 on a test, and a lot of you would be like, hey, what are you talking about? Give me all my points. I deserve it. I earned it. Well, listen, anytime, again, you're dealing with units of measure, you got to make sure you throw those in because uh, uh, a lot of your teachers are not going to be as generous as I would be. Okay, but listen, if you got this totally right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face to celebrate an A+, plus, A100%, and multiple stars. So you can celebrate your awesomeness when it comes to uh, sectors of a circle. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. How do we do this? Well, this is not that difficult. What we're talking about is the area of a circle. Okay, now this sector, this little pizza slice, represents a part of the area of a circle. So it's going to be a good idea for us to remember what the formula is for area of a circle. So here it is right here. Area of a circle is equal to pi r squared, where r is the radius. So we have enough information right here to find the total area of this circle. Now, we don't want the total area of the circle. We just want this segment right here, right? So how can we figure this out, right? How can we figure out this part of the circle? Well, this is not that difficult as well, because what we need to uh, do is use this arc information from here to here when we have a uh, portion of the circle, the outside, we're measuring in degrees, we refer to that as an arc. So really what we're trying to do is find the area of some percentage of the circle. Now what percent of the circle are we trying to find the area of? Well, it would simply going to be 75% out of the entire area of the uh, circle, which is what, 300, I'm sorry, 75 degrees. Uh, the entire circle is 360 degrees, so we're, we're finding the percentage that's going to be equal to 75 over 360, okay? So this is how much of this area this sector is right there. So what we can do is calculate the area and then multiply by this percentage right there, and then we will have the answer. So not that difficult, and even if you didn't know exactly how to do this, if, if you're thinking just kind of common sense, like, yeah, I think this is the way to go, well, then listen, that is the way to uh, do a lot of problems. Just don't... Um, uh, sell yourself short when you're attempting to do a math problem. You know, you, it's impossible to, to look at a problem like, oh, no, I can't do that. It's definitely impossible. Well, you don't really know until you try. And even, though, even, even if you don't get the entire problem correct, see how much of the problem you were doing um, uh, correctly or, or how much you, you, uh, you knew. Now, I'm going to suggest to you that um, there are certain formulas in mathematics that you should try to put into your long-term memory. The area of a circle, I think, is one of those uh, particular uh, formulas. Of course, you know, when you study mathematics, geometry, algebra, you're, you're given tons and tons and tons of formulas. Uh, that's why you have to take notes, right? But some of these here, you should commit to your long-term memory. So if you didn't uh, remember what the area of a circle is, I suggest that you try to, you know, uh, stick that in again into your kind of data center in terms of formulas that you want to remember because it's such a common uh, formula. But let's go ahead and put this all together now. All right, so here is going to be the percentage of the circle, 75 over 360 degrees. We don't have to put the degrees in, and we're going to multiply it by the area. The area, again, is pi r squared. What is r? r is the radius of the circle, which is 5 centimeters. You don't have to put the uh, units of measure in when you're doing the calculation. Just you have to keep that in mind at the end of the answer. So it's going to be pi r squared or pi 5 squared. So 5 squared, of course, is going to be what? That's 25 times pi. Okay. 
So this part right here, I'm doing right there. And then uh, 75 over 360, we can reduce that fraction uh, into 5 over 24. So you don't want to turn that into a decimal, okay? It's, uh, I'm just talking about stylistically. Uh, you, you want to kind of leave things as a fraction. So you don't want to leave 75 over uh, 360 times 25 uh, pi. You don't want to do that uh, because, uh, or uh, 25 pi, because that's going, you need to reduce that fraction. So the easiest way to do that is to reduce this fraction. Uh, of course, we got 75 over 360 that could be reduced to 5 over 24. And then 5 times 25 is what? 125. And then we're going to leave that pi over 24. Let me kind of get this all out of the way so you can see the calculations, not to confuse you. Okay. So again, area of a circle, the full area of the circle. And then this is the percentage here uh, that represents that uh, uh, part of the um, the circle that is the sector. We're multiplying by that. So 5 times 25 is 125 pi over 24. Now, again, we're dealing with area, so we're going to throw in that centimeters cubed. Okay, so that's basically it. Again, you know, uh, this is kind of basic geometry. Uh, you know, you're going to be doing a lot more uh, challenging stuff like this if you're taking, like, say, a high school level geometry course. Now, if you happen to uh, be watching this video because you're like, oh, I'm doing this in class right now, you, you know, it's a good chance that you are in a high school level geometry course. If you need help with uh, high school geometry or that, um, you know, geometry is kind of only really taught. I mean, there's little parts of geometry taught throughout your elementary school, middle school, but you're only really formally study geometry like at the high school level. So if you're at that level, check out my full complete geometry course. I go into uh, a ton of geometry. I mean, I mean, I, uh, to include proofs, all the theorems and postulates and all that kind of good stuff. So if you need help with that, now if you need help with like basic geometry, you could probably do okay with like my pre-algebra course. I kind of go over basic surface area, volume, etc. So those are two good recommendations. If you want to follow through and learn more geometry, I also have a ton of additional YouTube videos that cover various uh, different type of geometry problems. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.